Again, on this Palm Sunday, we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace, partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The Master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not interfere in the case of that holy man. I had a dream about him today, which has greatly upset me. Meanwhile, the chief priests and elders convinced the crowds that they should ask for Barabbas and have Jesus put to death. So when the procurator asked them, Which one do you wish me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Then what am I to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? But they only shouted louder, Crucify him! Pilate finally realized that he was making no impression and that a riot was breaking out instead. He called for water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, declaring as he did so, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. The responsibility is yours. The whole people said in reply, Let his blood be on us and our children. At that, he released Barabbas to them. Jesus, however, he first has scourged, 
Then he handed him over to be crucified. The procurator's soldiers took Jesus inside the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and wrapped him in a scarlet military cloak, weaving a crown out of thorns. They fixed it on his head and stuck a reed in his right hand. Then they began to mock him by dropping to their knees before him, saying, All hail, King of the Jews. They also spat at him. Afterward, they took hold of the reed and kept striking him on the head. Finally, when they had finished making a fool of him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucifixion. On their way out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man was pressed into service to carry the cross. Upon arriving at a site called Golgotha, a name which means skull place, they gave him a drink of wine flavored with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Above his head, they had put a charge against him in writing, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two insurgents were crucified along with him, one at, one at his right and one at his left. People going by kept insulting him, tossing their heads and saying, So you are the one who is going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself, why don't you? Come down off that cross if you are God's son. The chief priests, the scribes, and the elders also joined in the jeering. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let's see him come down from that cross. Then we will believe him. He relied on God. Let God rescue him now if he wants to. After all, he claimed, I am God's son. The insurgents who had been crucified with him kept taunting him in the same way. From noon onward, there was darkness over the whole land until mid-afternoon. Then toward mid-afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud tone, Ela, Ela, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This made some of the bystanders who heard it remark, He is invoking Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran off and got a sponge. He soaked it in cheap wine, and sticking it on a reed, tried to make him drink. Meanwhile, the rest said, Leave him alone. Let's see whether Elijah comes to his rescue. Once again, Jesus cried out in a loud voice and then gave up his spirit. Suddenly, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. Many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came forth from their tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and his men, who were keeping watch over Jesus, were terror-stricken at seeing the earthquake and all that was happening, and said, Clearly, this was the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Palm Sunday 2020, and certainly been a very, very long line for all of us. So I thought I'd begin with a, what a story that President Reagan told. He always had these little antidotes to kind of remind us uh, what's really important in life. He told a story once about a, a pig and a chicken, and they got kind of tired of being around the farm all the time, so they took a walk into town. They wanted to get a job in town. And as they're walking into town, the chicken notices a sign at a restaurant that says, ham and eggs, a dollar and a quarter. So the chicken turns to the pig and says, um, how about we go here and apply for a job? And the pig said, wait a minute. For you, it's a contribution. For me, it's a total commitment. Today, Palm Sunday, the, the scripture we just heard, is really all about total commitment. I don't want to mispronounce this, but I probably will. There's a town in Mexico called Aguas Cali and Tapes. Um, it's in Mexico, and in that town, there is an 82-foot statue of Christ. It is the 10th tenth, tenth tallest statue of Christ in the entire world. 
and it's located right above their dam. And the interesting thing about this statue is that there's no right arm on Jesus. His right leg is broken off. Um, the, there's no um, wood, there's no cross. And also his face is very, very scarred. And this was commissioned in 2016 to be, again, this bronze statue to be made. And it all goes back to a story by a priest by the name of Father Ramon Q. Father Q was a Spanish Jesuit, and he once told this story uh, that he put himself into it. The story was about, he was looking, he was in this antique shop, and in the antique shop, he saw this statue, this statue that I just described, of Christ with no right arm, a snapped off right leg, no cross to stand on, and um, this, this face that was badly scarred. He saw the statue, he felt really, really bad about it. And so what he decided to do was he bought it, he was gonna bring it home, make it right, and then he was gonna put it up in church for people to see. And as the story goes on, when he gets home, the priest begins to talk to the broken Christ. And the broken Christ implores him, don't fix the statue. Please don't fix the statue. Put it in church just exactly as it is. When the priest asked him why, he said, I want you and the parishioners every time to look at the statue to remind yourselves you have to seek and you have to help people that are struggling. And if you were in Mexico and if you saw this statue, there is a little, there's a sign underneath it. And the sign is this. It says, leave me broken. I'd like that when you look at me broken like this, you remember that many of your brothers and sisters who are broken, poor, indigent, oppressed, sick, and mutilated, without arms because they are incapacitated, left without any means to work, without feet, because they are impeded to walk their way, without face, because they have been robbed of their honor and prestige. They are forgotten. Those who see them turn away since they are like me, a broken Christ. So this is really, the story is really not about devotion, a private devotion that we have. It's really a story about, as we talked about with the, um, the, in the first story that Ronald Reagan told with the chicken and the pig, it's all about commitment. It's about a commitment to do God's work in this world. After all, when we go through the scriptures, let's always remember that for Jesus, the one sheep that left was so important. So important that Jesus never gave up on that sheep. And Jesus promised us, he will never give up on us. God bless. Let us now offer these petitions. That Catholics around the world will experience the strength of their faith community when death and worship is not possible. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are alone will find solace in their love. We pray especially for those experiencing isolation during the coronavirus restrictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those living with the fear of the disease will find a sense of calm and shelter in Christ. We especially pray for people who are sick from the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of nations will work together and find mutual solutions to benefit all people. We pray especially for cooperative work on the solutions for the coronavirus pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will live forever with Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayer. As we begin this week, which we call holy, may we truly be guided by the love you have for us through Christ our Lord.
Christ, your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation be with you near at hand, so that through it we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice once and for all, we may already feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. For it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sin and his resurrection has purchased our justification. So once again, we join our loved ones in heaven as we sing this hymn of an ending praise. <laughs>
as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The redeeming power of the glory of the Lord is now Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, we love and serve the Lord. Thanks be 